Hi, this is Mike Maloney, and I've got Jeff Clark with me here again for uh, another frequently asked question. Jeff, what do you got? Hi, Mike. Great to be back with you again. And yes, I've gotten this question a few times now, so I thought I'd throw it out to you here in, in a video. And that is this. When, Mike, when will our big payday come? A lot of us gold and silver investors have been invested for a while. Uh, so when is our big payday going to come? Do you have a sense for how much longer this is really going to take? And uh, could it even happen in 2021? Could that be the, the beginning of the big run up in gold and silver? Uh, the short answer, answer to the second part of your question is yes, it could happen in 2021. I have a few, you know, it's going to coincide with uh, uh, everybody getting scared. And that coincides with the stock market not doing well usually. Uh, so there, there will be a day when it comes. Now, the Federal Reserve uh, is, and the other world's central banks are all working on digital currencies and digital uh, phone wallets that will store the currencies and they'll be able to put currency directly into those wallets. They're trying to control velocity and quantity directly. They want a much, you know, the Fed and the uh, ECB and the Bank of Japan and so on, uh, they have influence over the quantity of currency and uh, they have influence on velocity through interest rates and currency creation. Uh, but the majority of currency is created by the banks. It's created by all of us going and taking out a loan. Um, now, uh, when the day comes where uh, everybody gets scared, velocity slows again, and they will start upping the quantity to try and counteract that. Because, you know, with, with the digital phone wallets, too, they can go negative on interest rates, and they can go severely negative, where your currency just starts to vanish. They're basically charging you interest to have the currency in your wallet. <laughs> Yes, I mean this is just so immoral. It is just they're char they are you've got currency in your wallet. Like imagine your regular old wallet and paper currency, and the Federal Reserve is now going to reach into your wallet and steal a little bit of it every month. <laughs> this is crazy. It's an insane world. Uh, but our day comes when everybody stops uh, trusting, the and and this will come. There is going to come a day where people stop trusting all of this currency creation, that the Fed is this expert and they know how to control the economy. That day absolutely will come. And when people start turning their backs on the dollar, then you can see this enormous rise. But again, you know, um, in our last video that we did, uh, I showed a chart of the performance of uh, gold versus the stock market over the last century. Our day is you know the, the we've gotten a taste of it. It has been coming. Uh, anybody that's been invested in this as long as I have, I've been buying gold since October of 2002, and it was only $315 an ounce at the spot price on that first day that I bought it. And I've been uh, adding to my uh, holdings ever since then. Uh, I did buy you know I, there's a little bit of silver that I bought uh, at prices that are higher than today but not that much because I dollar cost average in over this long period of time. I really did expect uh, that this payday, the big payday would have already been here by now. Um, but you know, I've shown many times a chart of uh, the uh, greatly amplified echoes of the past. It's, uh, the, it's history repeating uh, with a twist is the way I say it, or Mark Twain would say it, that history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. And this rhyme is so close, it's incredible. It's just that it's taking 2.42 times longer, or, or 2.24, I can't remember, uh, and 1.8 times greater in magnitude. The, the target then is late 2023, if it, if it stays on track and history uh, has such a, uh, a, a close rhyme to the bull market of the 70s, I'm not saying it's going to, but that's also predicting a, a price over $11,000 an ounce in late uh, 2023. Uh, so 
I think between now and then uh, that there's going to be something that's hitting the fan <laughs> and when it does and when people get scared, the rush into precious metals, especially by like the institutional funds and stuff we were talking about in the last video and the big money, that's going to take this astronomical because uh, gold and silver, uh, gold is a tiny market, but silver is a microscopic uh, nano market. I mean, it is uh, tiny, 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 and it just can't take a lot of cash flooding into it without uh, prices going astronomical. So as I've said many times, there will come a day where gold and silver become unaffordium and unobtainium. Uh, you won't be able to get it, and if you can get it, it's going to be at astronomical prices. Yes, good point. And since I'm uh, confident in the big picture, uh, I'm content to just continue to accumulate now, you know, waiting for that because panics can happen fast. And I, I think that's probably what's going to happen at some point with all the overvalued markets that we have and debt and all the reasons that we've all talked about. I think a panic could happen relatively quickly and suddenly uh, like we saw in 2000 when the NASDAQ bubble burst in 2008, here in 2020. So it can happen quickly and suddenly. And I want to be prepared before that, because once that happens, not only are prices going to be higher, but premiums are going to be higher. And soon after that, we could get into this unaffordium and unobtainium you know, situation that you've talked about. So for me, I just want to be prepared because I am confident in the big picture. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, we do. Want, I, I like that you're saying that you've got patience and you're I'm actually grateful for the extra time to accumulate because uh, they have pushed this thing so far. You know, I really thought that the meltdown was going to come in 2008 when it started. Then I thought it was going to continue and they papered over it. They didn't let it continue. And so the problems are still there, but they're festering even more. The, and they just blew every bubble that there was even bigger. And the banks, the too big to fail banks are now even bigger. Every problem that existed and caused the crisis of 2008 still persists and it has been magnified. And so they've pushed this thing, you know, if, it had, if there was a meltdown then, they would have been able to patch things up without the economy completely uh, collapsing, without them like having to start over from scratch, from the beginning. Uh, this time around, I just get the feeling that they've pushed this thing so far that when it breaks, this is going to be a real calamity, that this is going to be horrific. And uh, I am, uh, you know, I've recently purchased a, a farm and I'm, I've got my solar panels and, and my own water source. And uh, I mean, it's got me. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for the ex extra time because I don't think uh, pushing this thing further down the road is going to cause the results to be any worse than that, what they're going to be already. Uh, they're going to be bad, I mean, super bad, whether it happens now or whether it happens uh, three years from now. Uh, and uh, the only thing that will, the only difference that will happen is uh, the greater the quantity of currency in the system, the greater the amount of units of currency that will come chasing precious metals and the greater their ultimate price. And if there is a complete collapse, then you have to take a look at um, how many people, you know, I wrote about this uh, in my book, but you have to take a look at how many people own gold and silver, like in your city, any significant quantity of it. And then imagine like if the currency actually went away and that we started using gold and silver or they backed the currency with gold and silver again, um, basically the, if, if the people holding currency They've got assets, but their currency becomes worthless. They've got to sell their assets for something that has value. That's the gold and silver and potentially cryptocurrencies. And uh, that means that the scale of the wealth transfer, if there's a thousand times more people that don't own any precious metals compared to each one that does, this is a wealth transfer that could border on like a thousand to one. 
uh, ratio of, of uh, it's, it's, it's enormous when you really think about it. Uh, also, uh, there's one more thing. Um, everybody compares uh, a monetary meltdown to something like uh, the Weimar hyperinflation or hyperinflations that have taken place around the world. And the wealth transfer is astounding then. I can't remember the, the prices in gold that you could buy a house for in Berlin during the Weimar hyperinflation or a city block. I think it was 25 ounces of gold could buy you a city block in downtown Berlin, something like that. I can't remember the exact amount, so don't quote me on that. But um, it was an enormous wealth transfer. However, <laughs> that was just happening in one country, and it's a small country. Uh, this is, if, if the US dollar has a problem and the euro has a problem, it's going to cast doubt on all fiat currencies. And I do believe that this time it will be global. And so you don't have, you can't run to the fresh French franc, the Italian lira, the US dollar and the British pound like the Germans could. You can only run to gold and silver. And so that uh, takes whatever wealth transfer uh, we have for historical references. It takes that and magnifies it manyfold. Yes, very good point. And you bringing up uh, what gold would buy back then. I had to pull this article up real quick. Uh, back in 1980, at the peak, you could buy the average priced home in the U.S. with 106 ounces of gold um, back then. And for silver, it was 2,000, just over 2,000 ounces. So uh, I and think that was oh, not yeah. with a currency failure. That was just that you're talking about in the U.S. in the last precious metals bull market. And right now, uh, gold and silver compared to other assets are incredibly undervalued. They're not purchasing single family median price home uh, anywhere near uh, what they were back in uh, 1980. And a lot of people will put up charts that show that gold uh, did almost reach that uh, parity uh, with its value in 1980 um, uh, back in 2011, when it peaked in 2011. But they're using monthly or annual data. And if you put in data, daily data, we, we haven't come anywhere close. So that, that's another indicator that I use to show that this bull market is nowhere near being over yet. These things have to, when you're comparing stuff against stuff, the stuff has to balance. The currency is nothing but an illusion. Right. <laughs> Good point. So, yes. So it, that one wasn't the entire world rushing into it. It wasn't uh, a currency failure. Uh, it wasn't global. Uh, it was uh, that you're talking about what happened in the United States uh, when we went off the Bretton Woods system and gold was equalizing itself with, you know, it was revaluing itself to account for all the currency that had been printed since we started the Bretton Woods system. And well, since 1934, when gold's price went to 35 bucks an ounce and it had been suppressed since then. And so gold was just, it was the free market revaluing gold uh, to balance it against the other uh, real stuff in society. Well, we've created a lot more real stuff and the prices of those re the real stuff is a lot higher than it was back in 1980. And, uh, and gold still has an accounting to do. Yes, and that accounting by any measure will be bigger this time around than it was back then. So, oh, gives me shivers thinking about it, Mike. Exciting days ahead. So, well, thanks for weighing in on this topic, Mike. It was fun to talk about. So thank you, and I'll see you on the next one. Okay, see you later, Jeff.